Hi, in this video we're going to be going over a high-level explanation of how this bedrock breaking setup works in 1.13 plus. There are a variety of different piston-based bedrock breaking setups for 1.13 plus. Uh, some of them have been shown by Ed Example, among others. However, I believe that this is probably the simplest one to explain to other people as all of the parts are pretty discrete and easy to understand. Regardless, all the pieces that you see in this bedrock breaking setup will be used in any other piston-based bedrock breaking setup. Regardless of what it looks like, it will always have a headless normal piston, an extended normal piston, a downwards facing piston, a headless sticky piston, and some method of moving the downwards facing piston into the position of the extended piston. That's what the, the section at the top does. Of course, this is not the full setup that we'll need to actually break bedrock. These are just the fundamentals that will be present in any piston-based bedrock breaking setup. In order to explain how piston-based bedrock breaking works, we have to explain why all of these different pieces are present and the roles that they play individually. I've provided timestamps in the description along with a kind of pseudo-transcript that has a basic guide to how it works, so if you want to skip through this video or the less interesting explanations, you are more than free to do so. Alright, so let's start off by covering the way that piston-based bedrock breaking is usually explained to people. Uh, if somebody asks for a very simple explanation, this is what they might get. So as you can see here, we have a headless normal piston and we have a bedrock block. And if I update this piston by placing a block beside it, uh, the piston will realize it's not powered and it will retract. And in order to retract, the piston will replace the block in front of it with a uh, block 36 of a piston head to show that it's retracting, it's the visual. Uh, but of course there was a bedrock here before, so the bedrock gets replaced by the block 36 and therefore is destroyed. Although this is a very nice visual explanation of how bedrock breaking works with pistons, this is not how piston-based bedrock breaking works in 1.13+. Um, it's not actually possible to generate this setup in 1.13+, at least not currently with, uh, with the tech that's available right now. As you can see, if I try to power this piston, it won't extend because there's a bedrock here and this is an immovable block. Uh, and in order to create a headless piston, you have to extend the piston, so there's no way for us to extend this piston here. And I'll just show you how headless piston generation works. Uh, super quick. All right, so here I have a very basic setup that I've created uh, just to demonstrate how to create a headless piston. So we have a piston here and a very basic timer system here and then a TNT up there. Uh, when I activate the timer, after a little bit of a delay, this piston will extend. As you can see, the piston extended at the exact same time that the TNT exploded. Um, and because we timed that all perfectly, uh, the TNT exploded while the piston was extending, therefore the piston head wasn't actually in existence at the time, it was just a block 36 version of the piston head, uh, and we blew up the block 36, and so now it's just a headless piston. As this piston here is still bud powered by this redstone block, uh, if we update it it won't do anything, but if I remove the bud power source here and update the piston, it will realize that it's not actually powered and retract, uh, and then do the exact same thing that we saw earlier, and just create its piston head here and then retract it. Now that we've gone over how to create a headless piston, we need to go over two different things that headless pistons can be used for. The first is that a headless piston can be used to destroy blocks. We already saw that earlier with the destruction of a bedrock block, but it works for any block. And it'll also do it immediately. Uh, so if you have a block here, just any block, it doesn't really matter. We have a quartz block for now. We have our headless piston. And I'm just going to use carpet mod here, which is a really useful mod for debugging and understanding the game better. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to freeze the game. So now we've actually frozen the game, uh, so if I place a piston here and try to power it, it won't do anything because the game isn't actually processing anything right now, uh, we're just giving it different inputs that are being displayed. So we don't need any of this, uh, but what we do want to understand is will this destroy this block immediately? Uh, so I'll place a block on top of the piston here. Uh, so now we've updated this piston, but no ticks have been processed. So if we go one tick forward, will the quartz have been destroyed? So we can go one step forward with tick step one. And as you can see, we've only moved one tick forward, but the block was already destroyed. So in the sense of Minecraft, if something happens within one tick, that means it happens instantaneously. So here we have destroyed the quartz block immediately uh, by updating this headless piston. All right, so on the topic of things happening instantaneously, uh, we also have a use case for headless sticky pistons. So down here, we have a headless sticky piston. As you can see, if I toggle it back, we can see it's a sticky piston. Uh, and we're gonna see that we can also do something strange with headless sticky pistons that you can't normally do. Uh, so I'm going to freeze the game again and use this observer here to power this piston without powering the headless piston down here. We're going to step two ticks forward. Uh, that's because it's going to take two ticks for the observer to realize that there's a block in front of it and power the piston over here. Alright, so we've gone two game ticks forward and there's something strange that's happened here. 
This observer is emitting power, and this piston has started to extend along with its uh, slime block that was attached to it. But this block down here has already finished moving. Uh, as you can see, it's actually a real block, so if I pick block it, it'll bring me over to quartz, and I can actually destroy it, and yeah, the block is now gone in the game. So unfortunately I can't give an explanation of why this occurs, and honestly that would be way outside of the scope of this video. All that really matters is that in specific configurations you can use a headless sticky piston to accelerate the movement of a block 36, such that it immediately finishes moving. Uh, and this is very important for piston-based bedrock breaking. Alright, in order to understand how piston-based bedrock breaking works, we do need to understand one more thing, and that's block events. Fortunately, Carpet makes it pretty easy for us to demonstrate both headless piston bedrock breaking and block events at the same time. So we're actually going to use block events and carpet to break this bedrock block here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll place a piston here and a redstone block beside it. So now this piston is extended and powered by this redstone block. I'm going to freeze the game using tick freeze, which is provided by carpet, and then we're going to depower the piston. So when we depower the piston, the game essentially says that there's a piston here, therefore it needs to retract because it was initially powered and now it's not powered anymore. Uh, so we're going to put a block event here, and this is going to be a retraction block event. So now I'm going to destroy this piston and replace it with a downwards facing piston. So this is not the same piston we had before, this is a different piston. Uh, and it's not facing the same direction, so it's a very different piston. However, if I unfreeze the game, you'll see that it retracts and then becomes a sideways facing piston. The reason for this is that it's just how the game works, um, but basically the game kept the block event. The block event wasn't tied to that specific block, it was tied to the block position. And so the game said, in this position, we need to retract a piston later in the tick uh, when we can process things again. Uh, so when we unfroze the game, it saw the retraction event, saw there was a piston here, and retracted the piston. Uh, the piston was facing down, however, so it destroyed the block underneath, which was the bedrock block, and then reverted to a sideways facing piston because apparently there's enough information in the block event to determine which way the piston was originally facing. That's also the reason why the piston changes orientation in headless piston based bedrock breaking setups. Uh, so this piston will move over here in the bedrock setup, uh, but it will also become a sideways facing piston. Without any further ado, I suppose we should actually explain how this particular bedrock breaking setup works and specifically the update order involved in it. First off, I'll just talk through the process and then I'll show it actually happening with a slightly more fleshed out setup that actually allows us to break bedrock here. So the first thing that will happen in a bedrock breaking setup is that we will destroy the head of this piston. So this is analogous to us destroying the piston in our previous setup over there. Uh, and we're going to use this headless piston to do it. In theory, you could use TNT or something like that. All you need to do is destroy the head of the piston, uh, but it's much easier and way more reliable to use a headless normal piston, as we know exactly what will happen. It will immediately destroy the head of this piston uh, when we update this piston, and it will also do something nice for us. It will update this piston. Uh, and this piston is a bud-powered piston. It's not actually powered by any redstone block. You can see there's no power source around it. Uh, so if you have a piston like this over here, as you can see, it's not powered by anything, it's not bud powered. If we update it, it will retract. So that update will provide the analog to us destroying the redstone block here. It will tell the piston that it needs to retract, thereby generating a retraction block event for this block position here. The next thing that will happen is that we'll start extending this piston. Um, but there's also a trick here. This piston here is, of course, extended, and uh, this piston here is trying to move into its position. So if we try to move this piston right now, it won't be able to extend because it's blocked by an extended piston. It turns out that you need a specific kind of delay in order to tell the game that this piston has already been destroyed so that we can move this piston to here, but we don't want to delay it enough that the retraction event will already be gone. It turns out that there's an update order trick that we can use to allow this piston to move into this position in just the right timing, uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit when we show the practical demonstration. So of course, normally it would take this downwards facing piston multiple game ticks to move into this position. Uh, but we're going to employ the trick that we saw earlier, that headless sticky pistons can accelerate the movement of a block instantaneously, uh, and use this headless sticky piston here to instantaneously move this block into this position, which will be the analog to us placing the piston in the position of the destroyed extended piston. So therefore, this piston will have immediately moved into the position of this sideways facing piston, uh, the retraction event will fire, the game will see a downwards facing piston, it will destroy this block and replace it with the retracting piston head, and then this piston will become a sideways facing piston, um, as that's just how Minecraft works. All right, so now let's build up a design that will actually break bedrock and won't just result in us uh, 
failing, trying and failing to power this piston here. All right, so I've added a bit of extra stuff here that will allow us to visually see how the update process works uh, in your average bedrock breaker. So on this side and this side, we have just a piston here that will extend a block. This block, when it arrives, will update this piston here. Um, and on this side, it'll update this piston here. So basically the order of these blocks arriving will be determined by the order in which we update the observers. We also have something a bit different up here. We have a sticky piston. Now, the reason we're using a sticky piston here is that when you short pulse a sticky piston and it has a block in front of it, this block here will travel faster than everything else uh, attached to it, essentially. All right, so this is where we take a brief diversion to explain update order. Um, I've made a very cursed contraption over here that will just repeatedly power these command blocks. And as you can see, there's a specific order over and over again, uh, infinitely repeating, in which these redstone blocks are getting to the command blocks. Uh, so here we see that the left command block is being powered first, then the top command block, and then the bottom command block. This is just to demonstrate that there is a deterministic order in which the uh, blocks move that are pushed by a piston. Now this is not entirely true, uh, and there are situations in which things can be directional, which means that they change their behavior based on the direction they're facing. But for the purposes of demonstration, uh, that doesn't actually matter because this setup here is deterministic. Uh, so this one here will move, and then this will move. But it's important to note that although the middle block would normally move last, uh, in this case, because this piston is getting short pulsed and it's a sticky piston, it will move the block in front of it faster. Don't ask me why, that's just how Minecraft works. So due to update order, basically at one point in time the game will look like this, or if you want to be pedantic, the game will look kind of like this with this slime block here being a block 36 that's still moving in this direction. Uh, and essentially what we're doing is we're tricking the game into thinking that when this piston here is powered, that's not attached to this downwards facing piston. And the reason we have to do that is because at the point in time where this is normally powered in the setup, um, this normal piston here that's extended still exists. It hasn't been destroyed yet. So the game will try to push this downwards facing piston here, and it will fail because it'll realize that this extended piston here is blocking the downwards facing piston. Uh, and so this piston here won't actually extend at all. Uh, but because we use this trick, we trick the game into thinking that the downwards facing piston isn't attached to this piston, uh, and therefore, it can extend, and of course, later on in the tick, this slime block comes in, and the game happily lets us push the entire thing, because at that point in time, this piston has already been destroyed. This technique was developed by Zyre, who wasn't really happy with um, the old technique and the old theory about Artbreaker of pushing an extra block in uh, to trick this piston into thinking it's not attached to this downwards facing piston. All right, so now that we understand all of the mechanics in Bedrock Breaking, to some extent or another, uh, we can actually go ahead and break this one piece of bedrock that's been eluding us all this time. So what I'm going to do is use carpet again. We're going to freeze the game because I don't want to set up the necessary slime to actually do this automatically. All right, so now that the game is frozen, we can queue events in whatever way we want. The first thing we're going to do, as we went over earlier, is that we have to destroy the head of this extended piston. Uh, so we'll do that by updating this headless piston, which we will do by just powering this. The next thing we'll do is push this in. Uh, and of course, I forgot to provide a power source for this piston, so we'll place a redstone block here. So when this finishes extending, this here will be immediately powered by this redstone block and will start to extend. Finally, we will update the headless sticky piston, which will be used to instantaneously move this downwards facing normal piston into the position of this extended piston, uh, which will then retract, and it will retract in this position and destroy the bedrock. Uh, so we're going to need to go four game six forward in order to see the bedrock get broken. Oops, we need to go one more game tick. Nice, so as you can see, everything has worked perfectly here. Uh, the bedrock is gone, and all of these pistons are kind of in their glitchy animations uh, as they kind of settle down after the process has happened. As you can see, the slime block in between here that was connecting things uh, is actually missing because it's currently a block 36. Uh, it wasn't accelerated along with the piston. Uh, but the piston here is actually the piston that was facing down here before, it's just been transformed into a sideways facing piston. We've also destroyed the bedrock underneath. So right now I'm going to put a graphic on the screen for people who just want to know the update order. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else to go over in this video. Um, 
Sorry if this explanation was a bit too long-winded or complex. I tried to get through all the technical details that we needed to understand at a practical level how this works, but unfortunately a lot of this stuff is mired in really, really dense technical explanations that don't really work well uh, when you're trying to explain something practically to someone who just wants to use it. If you're able to make it to the, through this entire video, I commend you. Um, yeah, uh, maybe another Mechanist video in the future. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.